Again, my name is Sean, and today we're just going to be going over setting up our mockups, um, creating the mockups, and then also using the mockup creator to bring in different types of apparel that we can then incorporate into our mockups. <clears throat> so, on our design wizard, I'll go ahead and just open it up fresh. You have two different tabs you have the mockup and the mockup creator. So, the creator is just for bringing in different types of apparel. It can be shirts, it could be a hat, it could be really anything that you want to use as a mock up. So, in one example, I've even brought in like a wall um, and brought it into my creator so I could use like for wall decals and um, stuff like that. Uh, it's just a great way to show your product on a finished wall too. So it doesn't have to be apparel that you create these mock-up um, with or you use in the mock-up creator. It can really be any t any image you want um, you can include with the mock-up creator. All right, so the first thing we do is just going to run through our mock-up tab. <clears throat> So I already have a design pulled in here. This is just one of our live template designs. Um, we're not going to get too fancy with it. You know, we're just going to pretty much leave the design as is. We're going to really focus on how to set up these mockups. All right. So the first thing you'll see is at the top you have a basic and an advanced template type. Most of the time, I prefer to use the basic, and the reason is. When I switch, let's just go ahead and give a quick example. Let's do an order form, one shirt. The next step is gonna be our shirt and our design. So in the basic setting, you only have to fill out or really set up two different areas, the shirt and the design that we're gonna use. So if we're gonna pick the shirt or apparel or car decal, um, whatever style we want it to be on, we're gonna pick that first, and then we're gonna choose the design we wanna throw on it and then we're going to select the design. So if I go to advanced, same order form one shirt. Now we have a shirt design, shirt price, and design background color. Now it looks like it gives you more options here, but in reality, in with the basic, it doesn't show you those two options, but on the next screen, you can still edit the price and the background color. So I tend to just wait until we're on the next once we create the mock-up, I can change the price to whatever I want. I can change the background color to what, whatever I want. So this is just easier for me to set it up with just the in the basic format. So we'll run through a basic and then I'll, we'll run through advanced just to kind of show you as well. But again, the most, most of the time basic will be fine for what you're doing. Um, but if you want to use the advanced, you have that option too. All right, so let's just run through a quick one first. So we have a couple quick options. First one is just the design. It's just going to show the design and on pretty much a background color. So honestly, I don't even ever, I never use this quick design because right here, if I just highlight my design up here on my wizard, you have this black box. If I click that black box, it's already going to put a background color around it. I can then change the color to whatever I want. And essentially that's what you're going to get with your quick design. It's just going to be your design on a background that you can then change the color to whatever you'd like. So I never really used a quick design too much, but the one I use the most is the quick product. Because sometimes I just want to see it on a shirt or want to send it to somebody on a shirt. So this just gives it on a, puts it right on a shirt. And you'll see right here, it kind of gives you a brief look of what it's going to create for you. So if I go to quick mockup, you'll see that it gets a little bit more detailed. It has more of my information, my logo, my um, description of the design. So it gets a little bit more descriptive, but essentially it's just throwing your design on a background color with just your um, information on it. When we go to an order form, you'll see it looks a little bit different. You'll see the order form and so on. So this is going to give you a little proof kind of what option you're selecting. So let's just go back. We'll run through a quick product once and then we'll get a little bit more detailed into the order forms. <clears throat> All right. So with quick product, you're really just going to select your template type first. Then you're going to come down then you're going to come down to your template detail steps. So right now it says product. So then we go to product type. 
So what type of design or what type of product are we going to apply our design to? Do we want it women's, men, use accessories, or custom? So whatever this is going for, let's say this is a men's baseball shirt. So we'll go to men's. And then it's going to give us three options of t-shirt style. So we have a regular t-shirt, a long sleeve, or a hooded. So in this, in your uh, design wizard, a lot of these are already going to be preloaded. So you'll have like in women's, I think there's six options. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then youth, there's a boys, girls, and a onesie. And then accessories. You have a drawstring, cotton uh, keychain, headband, koozie, tote bag, and a car decal. So all those are going to be preloaded for you. But with the mock-up creator, you'll see that you have a custom area. So any custom, and I already have a few in here that um, I've done previously. So you'll see how you can name those yourself so you know exactly what you're going to use. So in your custom, this is how you're going to set up once we're in the mock-up creator. You'll see anything that we create in here can then go right into our product So we'll go back to our men's. Let's go ahead and do a long, let's do a t-shirt. So just like that, we did our product, men's t-shirt, and our product options either gives us the front or back. So most of the time, it's probably gonna be the front. Sometimes it might be front and back, and we have templates for that as well. This time, we're gonna put this on the front. So I'm gonna hit, once I have all these areas filled in, I'm just gonna hit save product now once I'm done with that I just come back up to template detail steps drop that to design everything else is gonna pretty much all my options down here are gonna be grayed out I don't need to do anything here I just need to highlight the design I want to use so if you have multiple designs on a page you just highlight the one you want on the shirt hit save design and then create mock-up so this is just a, again, quick product. It's just going to show you your shirt on a t-shirt. Now, same thing. Once I get here, if I want like a background color, I can just hit this highlight, hit the black box, and then I'll throw any background on there and I can pick the color scheme that I want to use. Now, everything on this page again, is you can change around. So if I don't want a white t-shirt, I can change it to a blue or a gray or purple. Now, one of the another feature that we have with our design wizard is right now, if I left click the blue, you'll see how it doesn't have a lot of detail in the shirt. It's a very flat blue. Now, if I right click the white, instead of left clicking, I'm gonna right click the white See how it adds more detail in the shirt? It kind of lightens it up and now you actually, it looks more like a real shirt. So if you right click the black, it's harder to see it. So with a darker shirt, you want to right click a lighter color. So if I right click the gray, it will help see that a little bit as well. Now you can right click any color, but just keep in mind, if you mix a blue with like a light green, you're going to have that kind of Seahawks green coming through there. So it's going to give you, sometimes it might be, you know, not a color scheme you'll really want to use, but with the white, if I right click the black, you'll see how it gives you all that extra detail in the shirt. So any questions up to this point? All right, yeah, so <clears throat> on this at this point too, the design can be changed as well. So, you know, let's say they have this design in mind, but hey, you know, we're actually using black t-shirts now. We're not using white. Okay, well, instead of redoing the entire design and then recreating the mock-up, I can just select, let's go ahead and select all the black. I'll change that to white. You won't be able to see it right now. But then I can grab the t-shirt, click black, right click the white to give it the detail. And now I have my shirt on a black t-shirt as well. And I don't have to go back and customize everything and recreate the mock-up. So everything on this page you can customize. And that's why, that's kind of what I was saying at the beginning. With this advanced, 
it gives you so many more options when you're creating these designs that it's almost too much and every everything you can want to change you can do and then once you create the actual mock-up so again don't feel overwhelmed if you go to advanced and you see all these extra drop downs like here um, compared to a basic there's only four so I would start with the basic and if you need to go to advance or you want to customize it all before feel free but again we're gonna start most of ours in the basic all right so that's our first t-shirt go ahead and delete that out we still have our original design so now let's say we'll go to a little bit harder one we'll do an order form with one shirt now I'll do the order form one shirt in basic and then I'll do it in an advance to show you the difference in how you can edit each one. All right, so same process each time. You're just going to pick your template type and then you're going to go down the line. So shirt, we'll first pick our shirt. Um, let's do this one on a women's and we'll do a dry fit shirt. Still going to be the front, so we hit save product. Then we go to design, save design, and create mock up. All right, so now we have our t shirt, our mock up, our order form. Now, see how my page hangs out where I have this order? Pretty much a quarter on each side is hanging over. Before you go and change everything or flip back between your pages down here, I always recommend just highlighting and changing your page size to fit around your design. And on the wizard, I'll show you that again. If you just highlight your design up here next to the black box, you'll see a white page that's going to resize your design or resize your page to fit around your design you have selected or whatever object you have selected. So I'm going to hit this white page right here. And you'll see that now it's completely in my page. And if I flip from page one to two now, nothing overlaps into the other page. If you don't do that, parts of your design, some of this text might leak into page one. And then when you go to delete your mock-up, you're still left with some like text in page one. So that's the first thing I'll always do is just resize my page to line up with my mock-up. Now, again, <clears throat> Everything here you can change around, even all the text. So the first thing we notice is we have the black text on a black background, okay? So I just select the black background. I can change that to white. I can change it to blue, light blue, gold, whatever I think looks best or whatever my colors are for that team, I'm gonna use in this mock-up. Same with here on this t-shirt. It's a white dry fit. You know what? They actually wanted it on a gold t-shirt. This is what their jersey is going to look like. So they want it just like their jersey. And then the background color to make it pop a little, we can make it all black. And then it stands out a little bit more. Same with our price. You'll see the number right here. I just click on it. You know what? This is for a school fundraiser. It's actually only $22 this time. So I just changed that to 22 all on this page. So, Again, it's really you know fairly easy. Um, everything on here you can change, even where it says the rhinestone world, this will all be changed. And shortly I'm gonna show you how to get all your information preloaded on these as well. So that's gonna be our next step. But all this can be changed if you don't want a certain part of this mock-up, you can delete that as well. So order form 2016, I don't need it to say that. I don't need this information. Um, you know, I'll just make this a little bit bigger so they have my address. You know, anything I want to do, I can edit on this page. Same with even the background colors of this gray. You know, like if we change it to blue, maybe my company has a blue and red um, color scheme. I can change it to match my color scheme of my business. I can make it all black and white to make it, you know, any style you want, you can change around the background as well. So everything on this page you can edit. You can still edit the colors of the design. So maybe the red, all the red, we actually want white. And now we can easily change that up too.
Any questions on the basic mock-up for one, one order form? <clears throat> All right, keep on going. So I'm just going to delete our page here. So now we're going to do the same exact design, same setup, but we're going to use advanced heading so you can see the difference of basic and advanced. So same thing, t-shirt. We already have it all figured out, but let's just pretend we're starting fresh. So this one's we'll go back to men's and we'll do a, a hooded sweatshirt. Still going to do the front, hit save to design, same design, highlight the design, save design, shirt price, type your price here. So I just come right here and I know going into it, this shirt is going to be $18. Save price, design background color. I click this box right here. And then I can use the color spectrum to select any color I want. And they have some already selected colors over here on this palette. So, you know, maybe you wanted a mint green or, you know, if there's a color scheme that sounds like it'd match your design, maybe a crimson, you know, anything that looks good. We'll just go ahead with the storm blue. Just move on, hit OK, save background, and then I can hit create mock-up. So it does allow you to do everything before and it sets it up there nicely for you. You can see the color background is the storm blue that we chose. But if anything changes at this point, you can still go back and edit it. Or, you know, so that's why I kind of stay with the basic just because things do change. They want to see it in different colors. Your pricing might go up or down to pay, depending on their changes. So that's why I just always use the basic because, you know, maybe they just want this for girls and they want to use glitter. And now the shirt price is going to go up to, you know, 22 or 25. So everything I, it doesn't matter how you do it. Advanced gives you all the options right then, but the basic, you'll be able to still edit all those options in the next screen. And sometimes what happens too is the background color you choose doesn't match or contrast well to the design. So you end up picking a different color anyway. So again, it's just extra steps to begin with to hopefully make it easier in the next screen. But if not, you can always change everything on the next once you get to the mock-up. Right. So we'll go ahead and get rid of this mock-up. And before we move on, to show you how to upload all your information. Some of the common errors you'll get is the red box. And usually all that is, is not saving your design. So what happens a lot, we'll save our product. We'll drop this down to design and we'll hit save design because there's only like one design on the screen. And then you hit create mockup and it doesn't recognize that design, so it gives you this red box. So if you're seeing this red box on any point, it just means that your design wasn't saved correctly. So you just need to highlight your design, then hit save, and then you shouldn't see this red box anymore. Um, we got one person asking, is there any way to import, import embroidery designs? Um, <clears throat> are you referring to use with the mock-up itself? Um, I haven't personally done that, um, with the embroidery design, is it, is it as a clear of an image like this, or is it more of like the actual like cutting for it? Like how you'd send it to a cutter. Cause technically you can use any design with this program. So let's say I have, let me see if I can. Yeah, so if you can save it like on a transparent background with the completed image where it looks nice, um, you can definitely use it. So let's say, let me try to find, let me do this. 
So this is the logo that I'm going to use to show you how to set up the next part. But say we have your logo and it's this is just an image. It has nothing to do with like a vector or anything like that. So even if you have a nice looking image of your design, you can use a picture, you can use any type of file. As long as you can pull it into Corel, you can use it with our mock-up creator. So this is just an image. It has, it's not a vectorized design, anything like that. You would just save design, hit create mock-up, and then you'd see that go on there. So even though it's not like a vector, it's still just an image, it will still put it right onto your product that you're using with. So I'm thinking you should be able to use it fine. Um, if you're having problems with it, just give us a call um, about it and we can probably figure it out. All right. So once we get all that figured out, we'll go ahead and move to, let's go ahead and just exit this page, delete that. All right, so now underneath our mockup, we have this little area that says the rhinestone world. So yours most likely says description. Um, so if you haven't ever set it up yet, it'll just say description and that's just our um, it just fills that in for the meantime to kind of show you where to input your information. So right next to this tab, you'll see a little pencil kind of design. It's hard to tell what it is, um, but it's like a little pencil. If you cl left click the pencil, it will open up with this TRW edit watermarks and logo. So if you click description, it will kind of show you how you need to set up your watermark. So if you only have one business or you only make watermarks for one business or something like that, it's you're probably only going to have one of these. If maybe you're making mock-ups for other people and they need their business, you can have multiple ones. And you'll see I have three listed right there. I have the rhinestone world, a description, and a test one. So the description, when you see that here, all that is is just a little descriptive about what description about what um, company we're using here so with this one let's say you know we'll just use I already have a rhinestone world but let's just say I want to name this TRW because I know this one's for the rhinestone world right. so the next section says watermark text so this is usually your company name your um, website, just something you do with your company so when people see it, they recognize one, it's yours, and two, that it's harder for them to steal your design. And you have a watermark on it, so if there's ever, you know, if you ever have to, you know, bring it up to court or, you know, something like that where you have to tr try to prove someone stole it from you, at least you have a watermark on it to kind of show that, hey, I created this, um, they are taking it from me, you know, stuff like that. Um, it will happen. So this is a, the watermark's a great way to help prevent that. So if you're ever listing like designs on Etsy, um, someone asked, I had a logo that was white and one that's my standard colors. I can choose between the two, depending on the background color. Um, with that, you'd probably, sometimes the logo doesn't always come up or at, like at a background color. Um, it might just be on the white part of the screen. So what I would do if you have two different logos you want to choose from is you're probably going to have to set up two different um, description or two different um, just names. Even though they're the same like company information, you can just do one um, logo white and then you can do logo full color or something just up here so you know the difference between the two and then just use one, whichever one you think would look best. So you might have to use both, like try both of them to see, um, but you won't be able to switch out the logo um, without creating like a second uh, description. Okay. So watermark text, this, we'll just use our website. So we'll do the rhinestoneworld.com. Transparency is, the number 80 is just to show you, uh, and you'll see that on the next page, how visible the watermark is. So we've set it at 80 and it's a good, usually a pretty good um, number to set it at. If you need to go, if you want to see it more, you can lower the number, 
And if you want to see it less, you can make the number higher. And I'll, sh I'll show you that in the next page as well. All right. And you can edit the transparency on the next page too. So don't worry too much about it at this point. All right. Logo path is just your logo. So you'll see this little folder next to it. We hit this little folder. I set this up earlier. So I have my TRW logo circle. So wherever you have your um, logo saved, if it's under your documents or pictures, all you have to do is just select the logo you want to use and you'll see this logo path pull from your computer. So you'll just see some type of path and that's where my logo is. So it's under users, my name, my desktop, and then my logo is right there. Um, someone asked if there's different product images for sale in the TRW store. There are a few, um, like we have a mug, um, and I can show you that in a second. I'll go through the mock-ups. There's a few, but honestly, after this webinar, I would hope that you guys can create anything you want on your own. And that's going to be used with the mock-up creator. So, and one of the ways, if anyone orders from like Sanmar, Bodek and Rhodes, any of those t-shirt apparel companies that you order from, you can get their product images from the site, their site for free. So if you have an account with them, um, you most likely can go, if you click on the image or the design, it will say like download or specs. And usually that will show you or give you an actual image of their t-shirt. And that's how I got the image we're going to use later. It's just a gild and white tee. Um, so you can pull those shirts directly from those websites and they're high resolution images. So they're really nice. They look good. They're not like going to Google and just typing in a shirt and bringing in some type of distorted image. If you get them directly from your supplier, um, which they usually provide for free, um, it'll, it'll give you a lot, uh, a nicer looking mock-up. All right. So business name. The rhinestone world. So sometimes stuff will repeat. It's okay. So watermark. I'm just going to copy and paste that from my website. It's the same thing. Phone number. Easy. Email. Street. Just make something up. Because I don't remember it. And city will do Sarasota. Now, this is really important. Once we have everything filled out, if you just hit save, everything you just did will not be saved. And you're going to have to come back in and do it again. So once you fill everything out, you have to hit add. You'll see it pop down in, into this area now and then saved. If you don't do this add first, it doesn't actually save what you just did. So now when I go to mockups, we'll go ahead and use a, let's do another order form one shirt. We'll do just a men's t-shirt, save product, design, highlight my design, save it. Now I can drop down and go to TRW. And I'm going to check my watermark because now I have a watermark and a logo on here. So once I hit that, just go ahead and create mockup. Now you actually see that mockup on there and my logo is right there. So that's what I was saying about um, the logo. Um, I think Debbie asked that. So it's usually on this white part here. So it's not, nothing behind it can be changed. Like the color scheme can't be changed behind it. Um, so that's why sometimes you might just want to use the full color. But if you, you know, if you highlight this entire design, put a black background on it, then you can probably get away with using your white one too. But most of the time the logo is going to be set up in a way where it's not actually going to have like a background color behind it. So it doesn't, you know, you most likely won't use that like all white one too much. Now let's go ahead and change my background color. So once I change that to white, you see how hard it is to see my watermark. So 
So one of the ways to help with the watermark is we have this transparency tool. It's this little checkered box. Now if you're in X, I think eight or higher, it should just drop this little bar right underneath and this will help with the transparency. If you're in a Corel like X5 or six, I would just try to get it down beforehand because it, it's not as easy as like a slide bar. Um, there's a lot more to it. So I would try to just get it figured out in here. If the transparency is too high, just come back, change this to 70, add, oh, let's get rid of that one and then save. And then that, that's why you can edit your transparency as well. <clears throat> so any questions on creating the mock-ups or setting up your business? Alrighty, so we'll go ahead and move on to actually using the mock-up creator. And one actually, one other thing real quick. So one of the things that uh, it's... We, it's hard to see them, but let me go ahead and delete these out real quick. Right here, we have three little options. They're really grayed out, but what they do is the W adds a watermark. This stone above it will simulate any stone. So, if, you know, maybe I had this design. Let's just pretend that I have this background on it. Let's go to my place and fill, path fill. And let's just pretend all these stones are actually part of my design. If I want to simulate these stones without actually creating a mock-up just to see what they'll look like, I can highlight them, hit simulate stones, and it will simulate those stones without me actually having to do it on the mock-up page. So we have that right there. Right above it is our add bling. So what this does is adds, makes it look like your design's really stand, actually getting hit by light. So when I hit, click the bling, I'll add that down here. Let me put this on a background so we can see it a little bit more. So that's our little bling feature here. So it makes it a little bit more realistic that it's actually shining like a rhinestone would. And then the W, if I just have my design like this, so let's say I select all my stones, I simulate those, add a couple things of bling, so you kind of just go around wherever you want to click, add some bling. Now to get off the bling, you actually have to re-click it. If you come up to like any of these, it'll still stay on the bling, so just come back and click off of it. And then when I'm done and ready, and these can be resized too, so you can select those and I could make one really big if I wanted to and change up the size as well. Now here, just highlight it, watermark, and it'll automatically select the watermark that I have chosen from my drop down. So this one's the rhinestone world. So that will just throw it right on my page. So if you're just in a quick rush, you know, you just want to send your customer something just to show them real quick hey i'm working on this is this what you're thinking of throw your watermark on there protect it you know add some quick bling to it and then you have a quick mock-up once you're done to get back you can just delete the bling so i'm just selecting those and deleting it and then to get rid of the simulated stones if i just highlight hold shift and select simulate stones again it'll just go right back to my regular rhinestones. So if you ever have a design and you actually accidentally simulate the stones, as long as you don't make it like an image, you can still go back and revert them to regular stones. Alrighty. So now we'll go ahead and create our, or use our mock-up creator. Um, 
it shouldn't. Someone asked if these files are bigger when you add bling or glitter. Um, took a long time to email because it was round 12. Um, it, it could add a little bit more. It shouldn't like make it so big that it's hard to send or anything like that. What might be happening is if when you're sending these designs, you definitely want to save them. Not saying you are or aren't, but make sure you save them as like a JPEG or PNG. If what it can be doing and for sure could definitely slow it down is when you're, if I have this design and I'm just going to do a path fill again, but if this whole design was filled with stones and then I came back and used the simulate stones on top of it, well, my stones are still there. It just puts a layer on top of it. So now instead of just having 180, down here it tells me 184 objects it doubles that so now there's you know almost 400 objects that it's going through so what I usually tend to do is if you are using a lot of a design with a lot of glitter or stones and they're simulated is once you have everything ready group everything together and then save your file and that tends to Corel looks at it as one big object at that point and it tends to move a little bit easier than, you know, grabbing 1,200 stones and trying to do a command on 1,200 stones. All right. So with our design, we're just going to work with a, the first one we're going to use is a basic Gildan T. So let me pull that in real quick. So again, oh, I'll get rid of this real quick. So again, everything we're going to use is, and I'm just going to resize my page real quick, is just a, it's a PNG or JPEG. So we're not, we're not creating these from vectors or anything like that. We're creating these from images. So I'm going to go to my mock-up creator. Now, when you're first looking at it, there's a lot of buttons on this page, but really you're not going to have to use too many of these. When you're creating these shirts, they're there to help, but you're not necessarily going to need to use them all. So the first thing we have up top is our brightness, contrast, shadow, and midtones. What this does is sometimes with certain shirts, it's harder to pull them in because it doesn't have a good shadowing to it or it can't recognize the trace. So what happens is by using these different brightness or contrast making it lighter or darker it makes it easier to see those outlines and details to give us a nicer looking um, trace so I'll show you what I mean so the first our first design here is just a simple white gildan anytime we're using the first thing you always want to do is try the auto boundary tracer we have an auto and a manual boundary tracer so the auto hopefully when you click it it creates an auto boundary around your design and it really makes you, you can create a mock-up in less than 30 seconds. If you have to do a manual trace, it's going to take a little bit longer, but you can still manu manually trace anything you want. And you're going to do that with the B spline. And that's why we put that B spline right in here. So with the auto trace, you're always going to want to do an inside contour. And the reason is because let's go ahead and just hit create auto boundary. Now, the last thing you want when you're creating these shirts is when you make the mock-up, is it for to see like the white on the outside? Because that won't change. Like if you pick up anything to, if, if my B spline accidentally came down here, it's always going to have this white in my image. And I don't want that. So the inside contour finds the outline of the shirt and then brings it in just a little bit. So there's never like that white, you don't ever see that white hanging off or anything like that. Right. So this trace was really nice. It got our entire design perfectly. Um, so we wouldn't need to do the manual trace with this design. So once we get here, our auto trace work. So we we're going to the next step. So the next step is our cutout color change mockup, our cutout image mockup. So the difference between the color change in the image is 
once we create this shirt, we can change it to a blue t-shirt, a red t-shirt, a black t-shirt, any color t-shirt we have or um, have on our color palette, we can use. So the, the problem with that is we have to, in order to make it a color changing t-shirt, you have to start with a white image. If you use a blue t-shirt or a red t-shirt, you cannot use the color changing mock-up. So if you want it to be a color changing mock-up, you always have to start it as a white t-shirt or white apparel, white anything that you want to color change, it has to start as a white image. So we have a white t-shirt here. So we're able to use cut out color change mock-up. We just highlight our entire design, including, so we wanna make sure we get the original image and the beast line that went around, our auto trace that went around it. And then we just click cut out color change mock-up. All right, it's gonna open a new page at the bottom and it'll say mock-up product. So here's our mock-up right here. I can now change it to any color I want that I have on my palette. Doesn't matter what palette I use. I can now change that t-shirt. All right, now one little trick to this is it will change the entire t-shirt. So, one little cheat that we like to do um, to make our mock-ups look even more realistic is most likely, especially with Gildan, this tag is always going to be white. So when I'm changing this to green or light blue, it, it doesn't stand out like a regular Gildan T would. So what we're able to do, if I go back to my page one, you'll see my Gildan tag here is nice and white. So I'm just going to draw a little box right over top of it. Let's go ahead and get rid of my trace so I don't pick that up. And then I'm going to select my box, hold shift, select my t-shirt, and do an intersect. In an intersect, just anything that box is on top of, it will recreate it in that shape. So I'm going to take my tag here, copy it, bring it to my new color changing mockup, hit paste. And then I'm just gonna move it right on top of my tag here. And then I'm just gonna group both together. And now, no matter what color I change it, it's got that white tag. And it just looks a little bit more realistic. So just a little extra cheat you can do kind of to make your mockups stand out, look a little bit more realistic, is to keep that tag white. So once we, once we actually have the mock-up created like we, like, we just go down to the next step. So our add to custom products. This is how we get this t-shirt into our custom product. So we're just gonna select front and we're gonna add our design placement. So with our design width, you can just say anything from like seven to 10 inches um, and you can adjust this too. So I'll just put seven and I'll create design placement and you'll see that red box appear. So wherever I save this red box on my design is where it will show up with my mock-up. So if I'm looking at a pocket design or I want, I know this is always gonna be set up for a pocket, I can make the box that small. If I want it going across the chest, I can put it in the chest area and so on. So wherever I save this, that's where my design is gonna go. So then I just highlight my design I come to our final box here. We're saving it as a front. Let's go to our custom six and we'll change the name to Gildan. And I always use like uh, CC for color changing or just something that I know that this is a color changing mockup. And I'll put basic T. Save custom product. Now I can go to mockups, quick product, product type, custom, and now you'll see my Gildan CC Basic T 
right there. So just like that, we're able to add any design. Again, this was a t-shirt, but you can add any type of product you want. You can add, use this mock-up creator and put it into the design wizard. So for our next example, I have this blue Under Armour collar tee. So right away, we have to know that we cannot use this as a color changing mockup. So the first thing I want to try to do is create an auto boundary. And that one came in really nice too. So I don't have to do a manual trace. If for some reason it doesn't come in nicely, again, you'll want to edit with the, mock, the brightness and contrast. You don't want to go too much because what will happen is it makes it too dark or the shadows too much for it. Um, and you'll see this blue box appear around your design when you use these, but don't, don't worry about that when you actually create the mockup, when you hit the color or cut out image mockup, you won't see that blue background around it anymore. So let me just rebring this in. And again, we're gonna do the create auto boundary. And then we have that set up perfectly. So again, same steps, but instead of hit, hit instead of hitting the cutout color change mockup, we're going to hit cutout image mockup. If for some reason you forget and you hit cutout color change mockup, that's okay. It's still going to bring it in and create the mockup, but you see how it made it gray now. So I can still try to change the color to this, but this is how it's going to look when you try to change the color or create an a color changing mock-up from something that's not white. It just doesn't come in that nicely. So sometimes you can get away with a few colors looking okay. Um, but most of the time, you know, you know, white and black, that doesn't look too bad. Um, but again, you don't want to get in the habit of doing that because there's again, only gonna be a few color selections that look decent. So let's go back to page. We have our design here. This time we're just gonna hit cut out image mockup. And this time it will stay exact, the exact same image that you saw. It won't change the color at all. It's just the image that we saw. So if you work with a school or organization that this is their standard t-shirt and they just put their logos on it, this is great because now I can just set this up for this business. You know what? They always put their name and position just on this corner. So. Just hit the wrong button so I can hit my create custom placement let's just say I want a three inch circle this time or three inch box let's go ahead and place this just right here wherever I want it right on there you know they got that chest logo put it right there for them and then when I'm ready I can just find a new custom Yeah, if, if you have a two color shirt, someone asked, what if you have a two color shirt? Um, so like this example here, let me just show you this one too. Um, this is a good example. So let's do an auto boundary. And this one, I don't think, yeah, this one has to have a little bit work. So you see how it only brings in the darker blue. So what we're able to do is maybe make this a little bit darker create auto boundary and that way sometimes it picks it up a little bit easier uh, it's getting a little bit better so let's go maybe a little bit darker create auto boundary still a little bit more there we go so now we have a nice auto boundary trace now if I have a two color design like this, um, someone asked how many customs there are. There are 12 customs, but you can always save over it. So where it has basic guild and T at the top, I can save right over that by just going here, changing the name to two color tank, um, 
save custom and it'll save over my old custom. So you have 12 you can set up, but if you know one you don't use anymore, you can just resave right over that. You won't actually be able to delete it, but you just save right over it. So we have our design here. Let's create a, let's cut out the image mockup. So this looks fine, but look what happens when I put it on a black background. You see how this still shows up in here? Does anyone know how we're going to get rid of this area here? So because we want the t-shirt to show through in this area too, or the background to show not the, you know, this exactly. So someone, Debbie answered B-spline, which is exactly right. So we have our B-spline here. So instead of, you know, you can go from Corel to right here to the B-spline, but we put it right here on this tab because sometimes you have to use it for a t-shirt style like this. So all we're going to do, and remember, we want to go on the inside of the t-shirt. So you don't want to get right up on that line. We want to go a little bit above it. And we're just going to use our B-spline. And I'm just going to click just on the inside path of my design here. Same on this side. And if they line up perfect, you can do a copy and paste and just mirror it. But this one doesn't line up the same way. So um, that's why I'm tracing both sides. Right. Once I have those selected, let me just change the color so you can see them. So I'm going to select my two red pieces, weld them together, select my t-shirt. I'm going to hold shift and select my t-shirt. So now I have all three of the, or all two of those selected, my red and my t-shirt. And then back minus front. And now the t-shirt or our background color will show right through there. And now it looks like an actual mock-up for our t-shirt or what we want to use for our mock-up. All right. Well, does anyone have any questions on what we've covered so far? Yeah, so there's, like I said, you can use this, this program, this creator for anything. Um, here's one example. I know these are really popular now. Those arm sleeves for, you know, baseball, football, basketball, a lot of arm sleeves. You can crop that one out um, and use that as a mock-up. You can bring in hats. Um, so a lot of these, you know, like I said, you can reuse them. I thought I brought a hat in. So any product, as long as it starts as white, you can make it a color changing. If, if it doesn't start as a white t-shirt, just know that it, you won't be able to color change it. Um, but you know, you can bring in a couple colors of the same t-shirt and use it that way. Um, so it's really however you want to set it up and each business is going to be different depending on, you know, who they're supplying or selling to. So let me pull this up real quick. Um, no, so under software, under tools and add-on, we have this mock-up add-on selection. So this one, um, you'll see there's 23 different style hats. We have mason jars. Um, we have the tailgate hoodie, um, the game day shirt, the badger arm sleeve, some shorts, glasses, and um, just a basic um, shirt mock-up front and back. So they are some preload. You're going to have all the preloaded ones um, that I kind of ran through, like the three men's, the six women's, the accessories, the kids. Um, but if you want anything special like this, you can purchase it. There's a couple free ones here. But otherwise, like I said, you can now use the mock-up creator and create any style you want or any image you want yourself. So you don't need to you know, purchase these here. If you want it as a convenience factor, go ahead. But you should be able to now use this mock-up creator to bring in any image that you want.
All right, so that pretty much wraps up today's webinar. Do you guys have any additional questions? Can I show you anything again? All right, I think that's it. Well, uh, we do have a lot going on this week, um, webinars and uh, live-wise, uh, Facebook Lives. So. On Wednesday, Lisa has a webinar for the Silhouette users. So anyone that's using uh, Silhouette. Yes, this is being recorded. So usually within 48 hours, we'll have this up. Um, we've had a few webinars in the past week. So I know one's already past due. But usually within 48 hours, we'll have those up. But this one will probably be closer to 48 because I know there's already two in the two waiting to be uploaded. So this one might be closer to 48 hours, um, but it is recorded so you can go back and review this. And we also have some quick ones already on the YouTube page as well. Um, so if this, if you need it today, go back, you can, I know we have some free ones on there as well that you can watch on YouTube um, if you're in a crunch. So Wednesday we have Silhouette users. Um, we have a webinar available at three. Also Wednesday at eight, we're gonna be creating, um, I have a webinar on creating school spirit designs, and that's gonna go over live templates, vector artwork, and um, rhinestone. So we're gonna to try to knock out all three of those. Um, so that one should be a really good webinar. And then Facebook Live, we have Lisa going on on Thursday at two, and she's gonna be unboxing the Cameo 3. So if there's any Cameo users, we're gonna be showing you the three. And then Matt has a live on Friday, with a new technique of applying HTV to bling anything. Um, and there's also gonna be some new, a new release. Um, I don't wanna to give too much away, but that one's gonna be a good one on Friday as well, so definitely check that out. And with Matt, you always know that something's probably gonna be given away or some type of contest, so definitely check that one out on Friday at one. And that's all Eastern time. Right. And then lastly, if you guys haven't checked it out, we have our blog up and going. So the blog's really nice. You're able to, it's, it goes a little bit more in depth of what you're really able to do with a lot of our products. Um, so it goes from creating the designs, um, learning from the CEO, and just a lot of different crafting to marketing, running your own business, a lot of just different blogs. Um, great to kind of read through and follow along with. Um, they're all free. So definitely check those out when you guys have time. It just goes a little bit in depth of how to create certain products or how to get the most um, value out of um, certain packs or designs or the wizard silhouette, everything like that. So um, depending on what you use, crafting to running your own business, you can find a blog in here that works for you. And if you guys ever want to see anything additional in here, let us know. We'll be happy to you know create a blog um, for any real category or any problem that people are running into. Well, thank you guys again. You guys were all great. Um, if you have any additional questions um, on what we cover, give us a call at 941-755-1696 or shoot us an email info at the rhinestoneworld.com. And yeah, Friday at one is on Facebook. So it's a, a Facebook live. So if you don't follow us on Facebook, make sure you follow us because that's where you're gonna see all our lives, which include a lot of giveaways. And then you also, anytime we have a design or any type of sale, it goes up there too. So you definitely want to make sure you're following us on Facebook if you're not. Um, and you'll most likely get involved in a lot more giveaways and see all our deals. All right. Well, you guys have a great, great Monday. Thanks for joining. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys Wednesday. Have a great night.